Hello and welcome to this quick review of this thing here. This is the Runcam Racer 5. Now, I did a video with a roundup of other Runcam technology, things like the new Runcam 2 4K and the new uh, Hybrid 2, which improved the FPV view for hybrid flyers like myself. Uh, this was something that I was hoping to squeak into that video. Sadly, it uh, arrived just after I'd finished editing it. Isn't that always the way? However, this Racer 5 uh, is the latest iteration of the Racer cameras. Again, I've done videos on those. And it has an extra couple of little improvements up its sleeve. So I thought, you know what, let's do a very quick video, show you how it comes, show what the images are like, and talk about the stuff that's different about the Racer 5. So while I unbox this, let's cover the stuff that's important. First of all is there are two versions of the lens. I've got the 1.8 millimeter here, depending on the field of view that you want. It's a thousand TVL line camera, but it does have an inbuilt gyro. Yep, you can actually get it to display its horizontal position in the on-screen display. Handy if you're trying to link it with things like beta flight. Now that gyro is pretty clever because the way it tends to work is that pilots will find their best angle by continuously fine tuning the camera pitch and uh, now the camera can independently display the real time angle on the on screen display and it also can connect with beta flight uh, via a serial port to calculate and display the flight control angle. Uh, full details for that are on the website. You can also update the firmware on this as well. Using something like the SpeedyBee app, you can, if you have it connected to your flight controller, connect to the flight controller with the SpeedyBee stuff and actually push the firmware onto the camera. And I love that. It's finally we're starting to get cameras that allow you to apply firmware updates and tweak stuff that you want to. Contacts at the back are pretty standard stuff. It runs from 5 to 36 volts uh, with a ground and video. So that's your standard three pins that are on the back of every camera. And you have the on-screen display pin and then the TX and RX if you're going to be connecting up to something like Betaflight or the ground and the menu if you're going to be using it like I've been using it here for the testing with a little joystick. This is a standard 19 by 19 millimeter camera size. So let me power it up. I'll show you what the menus look like on the bench. And while I'm running through these, I'll finish off all the specs. So this is a CMOS sensor, as I said, 1000 TVL lines. Uh, the 1.8 millimeter that I've got here is 160 degree field of view, which I thought might be a little bit too big, but actually produces a beautiful image. The 2.1 millimeter is a field of view of about 145 degrees. 4.3 and 16.9 switchable, and also NTSC and PAL as well. You can also mirror and flip it, horizontal, vertical, and all of the different ways that you'd like to. There is the one-touch seam setting, so you can go with either personal, which is what I'm going to show you the footage from in a moment, set up as you're seeing in this video, or you can then pick it up as light tracks, which is better for indoor LED lighting situations if you are racing with this. Minimum illumination is 0.01 lux, so pretty standard for this. Super wide dynamic range and color handling if the light gets too low. So let's talk a little bit about what it looks like out and about. This is a very bright wintry morning. It's quite cold. The sky is nice and clear. The sun is low, giving lots of deep shadows. And just like all the other racer cameras, the performance is very similar. Really, really good detail, even in the deepest shadows, even when it's exposing for really high contrast areas. You can see here a little bit of fisheye in the lens, uh, so be aware of that. And this, again, is, is set to 16.9 as we just set it. If you're interested, the bars in the top left-hand corner are the bars from my TBS Fusion receiver. This image here is recorded from the DVR in the fat sharks that I'm using. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite represent how nice the picture looks. Now you're probably spotting here that there's a couple of bits of oversaturation. Uh, it's doing a beautiful job of exposing the sky and exposing everything else in some pretty challenging conditions. But even looking here down the canal, looking into the shadows, the only thing I'm really losing here is a little bit of detail in the bottom right hand corner in that really dark area. But when I turn it around in a minute, you will see that it handles the really bright conditions where we have, we're have looking directly into the low winter sun with all of that light reflected on the canal. It's handling that absolutely beautifully. 
So this is a very nice update to the Run Cam 5. The big headlines here, I guess, are the fact that it can show you the individual pitch elevation that you've got the camera set on. So if you want, if that's something that you uh, do iteratively and gives you a lot of hassle, then you can sort that out. The second is you can do the firmware updates or over the Speedy B app into the camera, and I think that's a pretty big deal too. Nice to have the two lens options, huge wide voltage range, and the picture is just like the other racers. Very, very good color reproduction, a uh, little bit of fisheye, but overall a really, really good image. Perfect if you want to fly quickly for something like a quadcopter. Only a couple of things to mention. First of all, it's a 0.01 .01 look sensitive camera. So in really dark conditions, there are other run cams that are probably gonna perform a little bit better. There is that little bit of fisheye on the lens. It isn't terrible when you're flying around, it's not noticeable, but panning around an image like that really shows uh, the amount of distortion that you're getting. But remember, I'm on the 1.8 millimeter lens here, which is a really wide field of view. And lastly, by default, the color saturation for an exterior bright shot like that is quite high. Uh, if I was using this, and it'll probably get stuck in a flying wing or something at some point over this uh, coming year, then it will definitely have the saturation turned down a little bit just to make the colors look a little bit more natural. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that were wondering what's different. Uh, those are the main headlines. We have the ability to update the firmware, uh, to talk and send information back to Betaflight, and also to show its pitch angle as well. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media, and if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.